test. Alright, hello, welcome back. We are going to attempt to finish this Catacombs game without it crashing this time, which would be extremely... I don't know where I'm going with that. I'd be happy. So, where we left off is we were still in the past in these uh, Egyptian Catacomb type things. And we were going to go into this time gate, and that's where everything kind of broke last time. So... Uh, we're going to go into the time gate this time, and it should work. That's better. And now we are in kind of ancient Egypt, but also... Oh, that ain't good. Also kind of the future. Oh no, I'm destroying all these chests. Good. Alright. Uh, you'll notice something interesting. I don't know if I had talked about this last time, but I can turn and shoot at the same time now. And I think I complained about that in the first game. Uh... Not uh, not 3D, but I think I complained about it in Abyss. I said it was a weird uh, handicap. Nope, don't want that. To restrict the player to stop moving so that they can turn. Uh, it was actually my fault. I had shoot using left mouse instead of left control. So, uh... It was bouncing between keyboard and mouse input, and when it does that, it hiccups for a second. It's, it's not a big fan of that. So, that was actually my fault. And I have since corrected this, uh, this, uh, controller config to reflect that. Uh, dang, I didn't mean to pick that up. Alright, we're going to be waiting for 80 seconds for this to end, unfortunately. So, oh, yeah. Honestly, I probably could have saved myself a couple of spells and a healing potion or two if I had grabbed that time. Uh stop actually in the middle of combat I didn't know it was there until you know match was over basically but yeah so uh, interestingly though I think this is the first that was it I just fought a bunch of people in uh, a combat arena I was gonna say I think that's the first combat arena an ominous sound. I think that was the first combat arena we've encountered thus far. Alright, so Axis of the Time Lord. That was not cool. Wait, are they invisible? If I remember correctly, I've done a little bit of research here. And uh, I believe this is a hub world. The 
first door. Alright, let's go to the first node then. Kind of like a hub world, I, I think I'm going to end up doing some levels challenges coming back here. Something we did back in 3D, but I don't think we've done since in the uh, adventure series. Do their bullets bounce? Nope! There's certainly a second one there. I gotta get back into uh, the feel of this. It's been a, a while since we've played one of these. Yeah, my controller just rebooted. It does that sometimes. It, I think it's getting worse. I'm not sure if it's my, uh, if it's the receiver or the controller. But that means that VSC is not going to be picking up my uh, inputs. Oh, why would I do that? Alright. I thought I only needed to get a red one. We got a yellow one now. Being that uh, VSC needs to get changed. I'm going to do that real quick. Just uh, come over here and change it to controller 2. There we go. Sometimes it drops to controller 3, which I always find to be a little interesting. It skips 2. But that's just uh, one of the things that I have to deal with since I've probably dropped this controller too many times. Ah, man. There we go. I had a... Uh, I had VSC. Wait, didn't we pick up a red key? Or did I leave that behind? One thing that's kind of irritating me is that we have... Whoa! New enemy! We have textured doors that have different colors on them. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the color of the door is the key needed. And to me, that seems like uh, a no-brainer. High Chamber of Android Mages. I'll tell you, hey, hello everybody, we got a couple people in here. Uh, we got uh, Catacomb Apocalypse going on right now. Uh, pretty good old game, very much in the vein of, uh, you could say Wolfenstein. We got, s we only have one weapon, which is this little bolt here. But, uh, it, uh, it does have some interesting stuff for its age. We have a hub world, uh, that I'm actually going to go back to if it's going to allow me. Otherwise, I guess I'm using this red key on this red door. Nope, oh, need a blue one. Access to- yeah, I need to go back, see, so return to the time gate. So I need to find this blue... ...key, so I can go back to the hub world, because I have this red key to open the door in it. So, uh, see, that's also... that's a yellow door. Oh, that was a hidden wall. 
I just destroyed some resources. That's okay though. Dang, this is a hidden niche. That usually means it's not where I need to be. Yeah, and there's nothing in here. Alright, so... There's gotta be something in here then. What did I miss in here? Oh, that's what I missed. Alright. More android mages. Come on. Dang, these guys are fast. Got him. Alright, no blue key in here either, though. Oh, we got a yellow key, though. And there is a yellow door out in the main area. Alright. Something I missed from Hover Tank 3D. Yeah, I think that was it, because I don't think Catacomb 3D had it. Uh, is a run button. Wait, is this yellow? Nope, that was blue. I could have sworn there was a yellow door somewhere. That one. Ah, man. One thing I am greatly looking forward to when we finally get around to playing uh, Doom is uh, not just hiding behind corners. Just sitting around a corner and, and rapidly attacking. It's just a little, a little boring for me. Alright, so now we got the blue key to get in the door to take the red key back to the hub world. <laughs> Alright. That wasn't so bad. Please don't tell me the enemies are- Oh, come on! There is no need for that at all. Well, oh, getting lost here. Alright, <laughs> let's use this red key. Alright, so I gotta do each of these portals first. And I guess I'll save. We'll do a fire node. So we did the first one, now we're doing fire. Probably should write these down so I don't double up on any of this, but we're just gonna wing it. Okay, that is a fast enemy. Uh, we're gonna save again. No, that is not how you spell this. <clears throat> not sure what happened with that macro there. All right, I uh, I know I said it last time they used this fire, uh, what do you call it? Texture? Whoa, what is this, like a flame tank, dude? But it drastically reduces readability, and maybe that's what they're going for. I mean, I can't imagine somebody who uses actual fire walls would want to... Uh, their dungeon to be easily navigated. Kind of the whole point of using a firewall. But from a game design perspective, this is just real bad. And I get that it's cool. I do. Especially at the time when we didn't have... 
I mean, not only is this a, uh, a fire texture to make it look like I have flames around me rather than walls, but, I mean, it's animated. Maybe three, three frame animation, but uh, still, I don't believe we had them before this uh, series, the adventure series. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, it is cool. I just don't appreciate it from a, from a design point. It makes this it makes this level and uh, the other level they used it on back in Armageddon just way more difficult than they need to be. But then again, respawning those Sphinx guys is making the game just a little harder than it needs to be as well. Aha. So where am I? Northeast. But at least with the Sphinx guys, I kind of get it. Uh, maybe they didn't have. Well, I, I was gonna say maybe they didn't have global variables that they variables that they could have accessed. But I'm sure they did. I can't believe they didn't. I mean, a variable is a variable. If you have one type, you have all the types. You just need to know how to reference it. And, uh, you know, these guys are pretty smart. They did come up with all this. Alright, let's get out of here. We're done with this section. Uh, you, even though it's based on id stuff, I mean, Softus, they weren't... They weren't uh, chumps either. I mean, just look at what they've done with uh, this game, with the the, uh, the sprites that go underwater, these flame textures. Oh dang! Oh, that was a happy accident. I'll take them. Uh, you know, so so they weren't pushovers either. They they were definitely pushing this uh, this game in new directions. But it just seems like a small oversight to not keep a variable tracked that the player has been to the hub world before don't spawn those enemies but at the same time like i said given given the time its age i, I can give that one a pass these fire textures i don't know Okay, so I think that was the blue key. Now we just need to get out of here. Alright, and I don't necessarily mind being lost if it means I get to keep finding stuff like this. But I'd also like to be done with this level. Alright, so this is east. Oh my jeez. Wait, northeast. Northeast, this is good. Right here. <laughs> Dang. Let's get out of here. 
I almost wonder if this little section here isn't... Let's go to the water node. Let's not fight those guys this time. I don't feel like it. I almost wonder if, uh, you know, spawning those there is actually another way to waste some spells, because I don't know how close we are getting to the end of the game, but it's definitely hitting a point where I have an overabundance of spells, especially exterminators. What are you doing? Gross. Rest or blood? Nope, just that specific one, huh? Oh, jeez! Okay, so I've officially been scared by sprite art. Yay! Although, honestly, I can't say this the first time. I have played some truly terrifying 2D sprite games. They're not jump scares, though. So. Alright, these guys can stop popping up. How does that sound? Huh? You just stop. Oh, come. I said stop, man. Alright, so I really don't have a problem calling this the birth of the uh, combat arena. We have certainly not had any games since. <clears throat> nope, any game yet that has thrown this many enemies at us at a time. This game just seems to revel in the fact that it can launch... Actually, you know, I take that back. There are a couple of instances where we had a, a lot of enemies at the end of a game, isn't there? I don't remember which one, though. Was it the end of Armageddon? We had... Well, I mean, that's the same company, though. It wasn't 3D. <laughs> I don't know if I'd call that a battle arena, though. We did have seven... Or eight of those, uh, damage sponges, sponges. So, I mean... I don't think it would be completely incorrect to say that, uh, you know, maybe this wasn't the first game, but the series did start it. Alright, any more? I see you want me to destroy those chests, but that ain't gonna happen. Alright, so I, I was actually kind of afraid that these guys would hurt me while they were exploding. Going along with, uh, you know, like the trees. Enemies that create obstacles. Uh, and they don't. Sadly. I mean, uh, I can't say that I go around hoping that games, that, well, that these older games specifically put in obstacles for me to overcome. Because I'll tell you, those trees are annoying, but it seems like a misstep. We really haven't seen anything like those trees since those trees. Which is honestly a little bit of a shame, if you ask me. Because while they were very annoying, we are not going to downplay that. Those things are beyond annoying. I, uh, I'm glad they existed. That was a really neat mechanic that you don't see very often. Get both of them? I don't know. This is this a dead end? Nope. Come on. Oh, that ain't good. 
I just need to go straight and snag this future node! So I got first, fire, water, and future. Oh, this is wrong. I mean, I'll do this one again. It's not like it's uh, immensely difficult now that I know where everything is, but uh, yeah, this is not what I had planned. Come in, we'll grab this key, we will get out. Turning under control. Yep, yellow will open that. And we'll shoot a bunch of people in here. Well, robot bugs, I should say. Yep, there's the yellow key. I'll go open that other door, grab the blue key, and get out of here. Ah, you loser. I get both, no, I didn't get both of them, that's good. Good, and there's a potion in there too, so. Alright. guess what I'm going to do instead is take out these guys here. Oh. Oh. 
Alright, so this says ancient note of the Time Lords. So ancient's where I need to go. For the fourth key, the blue key I would assume. <clears throat> game saved. I have no idea where that Y doesn't take every time. You know what's weird though is the Y button as as a whole just doesn't take all the time. Like even when I'm pressing Y to uh, accept that I want to overrate, sometimes it just won't work. Alright, so they uh, repurposed that, did a, uh, what would you call it, pallet swap on it? Ow! Oh, I didn't even get hit. So he's not melee only like he was in the last games. Maybe that's because he's blue. So, uh, something interesting. Nope, I don't remember where I was going with that. <laughs> Although those guys aren't anywhere near as bullet spongy as they were in prior games. Not what I was going to say, but... Um, let's see. Should I go the other way? I mean, we are missing three gems. It's nothing weird, though. I feel like we're almost done with the game. Uh, I know there's only 16 levels. I'm not really sure where we're at right now. Skip that. Maybe. Make sure I'm not being followed. Red. Yellow. Green and blue. What? Ah, dang. I actually guessed that right. Chamber of the Transcendent Time Gate. Take this opportunity to save. Here, right there, I had to tap Y twice. Why? I don't know. All right, we got a, a, a lightning. Whoa, no, no. Yeah, I just did that. Got a lightning uh, shader going on in the ceiling, which is, you know, just flickering between white and black. I don't know if that blue is a... Uh... That's an optical illusion or if, uh, you know, they're actually putting that in there. Might just be the way that the white is flashing against the black. And we got this door over here. Key door? Yep, green. Alright, let's see what we got going on back here.
You know... I thought that was part of the wall, then I saw the red on the radar, and I knew I was in bad shape. I honestly figured that would be a destructible wall. It is... Well, I guess there's a lot of these that don't have weeds on them. Alright, so I'm getting very lost. Sure, that is the point of this. I also do feel like we are culminating towards an endpoint, though. I'm not sure if that's just me, uh, kind of feeling the. Dang, did we go in a circle? Am I taking damage? I could have sworn I heard damage. I think that was a s- no. I don't know if like I mean it could just be me. Normally we finish these games in a single set sitting. Uh, if not I try to tie it up over two days and... You know, uh, I let this one sit for a week. Uh, I've been busy with uh, making the, the next Steam Input Essentials video. Which is coming along quite nicely. I'd be surprised if it wasn't ready by the end of the weekend. But uh, yeah, I let this sit for a week and it feels like I should be done with this. It feels like I should have been done with this a long time ago. Awesome, I got a door. Key for a door. Oh geez, that's the one all the way back there, isn't it? All the way back at the beginning. Let's see how long it takes me to get back there. Because I'll tell you this, I was not paying attention. Still get one of them. Hopefully this will wrap me around. That's kind of what I'm hoping. I keep finding new things and I don't want to believe I'm getting deeper into this. But something tells me that's exactly what's happening. And I think that's a good sign. That's not a good sign. Where'd that guy go? Oh, I say guy. I should say where'd that eye go? Hmm. Oh ho! I don't know how I did it, but I did it. <laughs> oh my jeez. I hate you so much. Wait, I need another green key?
Let the maze drones guide you. I feel like I killed them all. I feel like I have made a huge mistake in life. And this room really hits the, uh, the game. DOS box is still running at 60 frames, but I mean it's it's chugging. Oh man. Did I really kill all the maze drones? I remember there was one eye left. I think I might just have to find him. There's a dead end, right? Yep. Okay, this is not exciting me at all. This is very boring. And I know that's kind of the idea. Well, I'm not going to say the idea was to bore the player. But the idea is to make something that is difficult to navigate through. Oh, oh, we got a new enemy. I am hoping so hard that for some strange reason I just missed this one nook. Nope, that literally is what this was, just a nook. I was really hoping there was one more piece to this. Okay, I, uh, I hate doing this, I do, but it is, it is time to uh, pull up a map. Because it is one o'clock, which means I don't really have that much time left. I got another 90 minutes tops, and I'd like to finish this game. This must be it. Ah, uh, come on. All right, so. Let's see if I can pull this up better like this. So we are going to, okay, 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 I got it. Oh man, this is just like a kid's maze. There's actually one right near the entrance here. And let's see, we're gonna go straight and uh, right 
turn, and there's going to be a little passageway here. We're going to go left, go in this first area, and the key will be right here. Wrong button, sir. Alright, so we got that key. Now see, here's the strange part. I don't even see how to get this one. Unless there's a destructible wall somewhere. There actually have to be two pairs of destructible walls. Alright, let's see what we can deal with. So if we come back here... None of that's destructible. So then we need to go this way. So you turn down. First one is a dead end. But this is not destructible either. So what about this area? And yeah, this is destructible. Nope, I'm not seeing how to get up here then. Unless that maybe? Alright, so we're going to try one more. Let's see where this takes us. Go right. Left. U-turn. Uh, right. That's a dead end. Yep. Left. Left. A little wall here. Nothing. Alright, we will be right back. I'm gonna have to look this up. It's kind of annoying. And, uh, yeah, so... I'm just gonna get back to the beginning and see what I can do about finding a way out of this dumb maze.
Alright, we are back. And I have no idea how I didn't think of this before. Uh, it's not a destructible wall. It's just the wall you can walk through, and these things still irritate me to this day. And there's probably going to be another one. Because I don't have the map pulled up on me right now. But where I am, if I remember correctly, does not connect to the hallway that houses the last key. And that would be the second one. So yeah, that explains in no uncertain terms why I could not find this. I do not like the hidden wall mechanic at all. I think I've expressed that uh, opinion plenty while playing this game. And I'm still pretty sure this was the first one to do it. Though I could be wrong. The uh, the three adventure games are definitely blurring together in my mind. In my memory. Oh. Alright, now I just need to get out of here. Alright, you got... Oh! Works for me. And we're at the point where we are running out of uh, space for zappers. However, I did check. We were only on level 9 out of the 16, I believe. Alright, there's the first one. Now I just need to go down and find the other one. These areas I don't have memorized as well. <clears throat> the first area, after looking at that map and traveling through it a couple times, I pretty much have it in my head by now. And now I'm beginning to get a little lost in this area. Which I'm going to say maybe isn't as... There we go. Alright, now we can get out of here. I thought we could get out of here. We gotta go up first. Then we U-turn it. Nope. That's empty. U-turn it. I think there's another U-turn in here. Nope. Dang. Really thought I knew where I was going for a second. There. 
That was luck, though. I wish I could say I knew exactly what I was doing there, but I don't. Yes! Let's get out of this area. Dang, another water level. Oh, it must be that, that. What is that? Stingrays? Oh, dang. Probably should have left that bin. Alright, are these machine gun toting skeletons? Well, I guess it'd be minigun toting skeletons. Not really sure that distinction really makes a huge difference. However, I will say yes, that appears to be exactly what they are. There doesn't seem to be a single enemy in here that doesn't have a ranged attack. And I mean, I get it. I'm, I'm pretty sure you, everyone's tired of hearing me say this, but the first uh, two games in the Adventure series, and of course uh, 3D, just, they were way too easy because pretty much everything was melee. The only thing that posed any damage was ranged, so the ideal solution would be to get rid of the melee, only put it ranged. Okay, that was a rather short level. You know what I think is the craziest part though? Like, I played these games the way they were intended uh, back when I was a kid. Uh, not, not the Cataclysm cool games specifically, but you know, Wolf and Doom. Maybe even some uh, Blake Stone. I want to say we had Blake Stone when I was a kid. I might have got on. Actually, I know we had Blake Stone, but I might have just got onto it when I was later. That might not have been during my, you know, formative years, so to speak. But I cannot imagine playing these games anymore with arrow keys and control and alt. It's just such a weird concept for me. Oh no. Why would you do that to me? Oh dang, I did that to myself though.
I guess just such a weird concept to me. The that the Steam controller just feels so natural for these retro FPS titles. And I know back in the day they had gamepad support for these things. Maybe not Catacomb. Maybe Wolf. I know Blakestone did. Wait a second. How did I get here? Like honestly, I went in, I got chest I turned around and came out the way I went in no that wasn't all for a chest was it Nope. Certainly was not. See, that's the thing that gets me, man. These hidden walls. I'm probably going to complain about the hidden walls until I finish this trilogy. Because they are seriously my biggest pet peeve. Wait a second. When I'm done with this, I am seriously going to want to see a map of this place because I cannot begin to fathom how I've done what I've done. I've gone in circles, but I've never seen any connecting points. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess the best bet is to go back out to the main area. And, yep, right here. Go into the side room. Go back here where I thought I went in one way and came out another. Wait, this is the area, right? Guess not. Okay. And a time gate. Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Computer core.
No enemies, cause y'all been putting enemies up behind me, sneaking them in. Uh, what are those? These are the kind of levels I like. Oh dang, these things hurt. Y'all gonna stop coming at me now? I like that. I like to find all my keys, then find the doors, and it's a nice linear level. Two. I also like that. I think more levels, I mean, I understand it fits the theme better here to do it. But labeling the areas on the walls is a real smart way of helping the player read the map layout. These guys aren't super spongy, but they definitely take a few more hits than uh, everything else, other than those blue demon guys. It's honestly not really bothering me too much right now. We'll see how I feel about it at the end of the game, I guess. Right now it's not too bad though. I think they have a decent uh, health bar, health number. And door four. And this one should take all my keys. What? These guys don't hit anywhere near as hard as those mechs, but it's still... I 
can still mess you up. One more green door somewhere back here. Watch the crystal sphere for dangers. Okay, not happy. I'm not cool with this. On the flip side though, as usual, I appreciate the ingenuity. As a player, I want nothing to do with this. Yeah, as a player, I want nothing to do with these invisible guys, but as someone appreciating the evolution of this genre, it's real cool to see that, uh, you know, it kind of originated here. Maybe not in so far that, you know, it was the first time to ever have a uh, invisible enemy. But just that it was the first FPS to have one. And, I mean, I get it. Maybe not everybody's as excited about that. That's just life. Everybody's going to find excitement in different things. But seeing where things came from, I mean, the invisible... They're not imps. Pinkies? Invisible pinkies from Doom. I mean, this is pretty much their origin. And it wasn't even id. And I think that's the part that continues to amaze me. Is that id might have uh, come up with the formula, so to speak, for the first person shooter with hover tank. I mean, like I've said many times on this channel, we've had first-person games. It's not like it developed that. But they were the first ones to do it in this style. With the freeform motion. And 
and the mazes and just the general concept of you know shooting you know first person with 360 degree aiming in real time i think that's the part that i think really separates uh, it's work with like a uh, hover tank and why I chose to start with hover tank it's kind of the real time and the free turning aspects I think those are the two key aspects that differentiate them because otherwise we had first person games we had first person games with shooting elements but it was always relegated to very strict gameplay ideas Kind of like uh, an on-rail shooter. That's first-person shooting, but you don't have the free turning. And uh, we had <clears throat> stuff like Bethesda's Terminator game, but it lacked... Come on. It lacked the mazes. It lacked, uh, you know, the, the, the linear levels. Terminator was more of an open world game, so, I mean, not entirely, it's not like it was their first Elder Scrolls Morrowind kind of thing, but you weren't going around just shooting everything either. You had an objective, you were searching for clues to find this objective, and your goal was to eliminate John Connor, I believe. And, uh, you know, you shot one person. That was it. That was the game. And I, I'm pretty sure that that's kind of the... I mean, I'm not pretty sure. I, I'm very sure that that's kind of the core concept that I think separates the first-person shooters and why I started with Hover Tank. But then we get to stuff like this, you know, and it shows a lot of where, you know, a lot of people see Wolf or Doom as being the first first-person shooters. Uh, you know, Wolf is definitely chronological, chronologically the grandfather to Doom. It would be kind of weird to say that, you know, Doom was the first, but Doom was a lot of people's first, and I think that gives it an image. All right, finally. That, I mean, that gives it a, a mythology, almost. And a lot of people just attribute it to being the first, because even before that, nothing really broke big. We had stuff like Catacomb, we had stuff like Wolf, but none of it really hit the mainstream like Doom did. But going back through these earlier titles, we get to see, you know, where Doom's ideas came from. Some of them were its ideas, and some of them weren't. But we can kind of trace back the lineage, <clears throat> which I think is kind of the important part for me, and it's the reason why I started this journey. I love first-person shooters. I grew up on them. I mean, sure, I had my NES. We had S Super Mario. I was blown away by what games could be with the platforming and all that jazz. But... Wait a second. Dang, I gotta go through all these. Uh, you know, but at the same time, it was really the first-person shooters that captured my imagination. Alright, you were not on my map. And, you know, Mario was cool when I was, when I was four. It was kind of my first introduction. My dad had uh, an Atari, he had an Amiga, but they were kind of things outside of my grasp. 
uh, I think I was too young for the Atari. The Amiga was too advanced for me. I do have to go through all these. And, and so they just... They didn't have what Nintendo did, where I could just pop in a cartridge and play and be amazed at what, you know, these games could do. I mean, even for people who had played Commodore or Amiga platformers that were more... They were slower. They didn't have the smooth scrolling that the Nintendo ended up having for Mario Brothers. So, uh, I didn't necessarily get that, like, ooh, ah, moment where, you know, it's the first time I saw scrolling sprites. <laughs> but it was still a revolutionary thing for me. Even if it wasn't the same reason why it was revolutionary for the rest of the industry. But, you know, as I get older, and video games are this thing that I'm used to now. And, uh, you know, so I've played a lot of platformers, and the Sega Genesis had come out, and I had a Genesis. And, you know, we had Sonic and, you know, platformers. Ooh, ah, look what the platformers can do now. Uh, and I was blown away, of course, as, as, you know, anybody was with the blast processing. But then you get stuff like Doom comes out. And it is a totally different ball game. I mean, it, it revolutionized everyone. If, what, the first time you saw Doom, you're like, whoa, that's just how it was. And so, you know, my dad gets uh, Doom. And just blown away. I need to play this game as much as I can. I'm using, you know... Uh, IDKFA and IDDQD and you know the the cheats that everybody knows now because I was too young to you know play it for real as I was with with pretty much anything that wasn't a platformer if I wasn't just running in place you know running one direction and jumping I was I was pretty much hosed RPGs nope uh, a lot of PC games nope Uh, but, you know, it, it completely changed what I thought a video game could be. And, you know, eventually Zero Tolerance comes out on the Genesis, and we grab that, and that's just an entire new ball game because it's on a gamepad. I know how to use a gamepad. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm six, seven years old. I've used the gamepad for three or four years now, and the Genesis is my favorite one at the time you know it, it trumps the nes and i don't really think i had much experience with the super nes at the time and there's just no way around it so i get to play first person shooter on this controller and it's just phenomenal and you know uh my mom has a laptop with windows uh, 3.11 on it and i can just barely read but i know how to put in dos commands to run wolf 3d so, I mean, first-person shooters just took over my life at that point. Uh, I mean, after that, I had uh, the PlayStation N64. And I can't really say that I got too much into first-person shooters. I mean, GoldenEye, Perfect Dark. But it was a, it was a lull in, in console shooting. It wasn't, you know, until Halo that drastically changed everything. So, you know, that happens, and, but then Quake comes out. 
And now I'm a little older. I'm like 9, 10 years old now. Maybe not that old. Actually, don't think I'm that old. Maybe like 8. 8 or 9. And, you know, Quake comes out. And Half-Life comes out. And mods come out. And Counter-Strike comes out. And I'm done. I am now a die-hard first-person shooter convert. It's the only thing I'm playing through my teenage years. And, you know, my dad, I, I told you that, you know, he, he was he was struck by this as well. I mean, it's not like it just affected me. Doom kind of reimagined everything that games could be, and everybody felt that. And, you know, my dad starts doing, uh, you know, kind of going before Quake. He's got Duke 3D. He's got Shadow Warrior. He's got Blood. I mean, the build engine games, I kind of associate them with my dad because he loved them. Redneck Rampage. I mean, we, if there was a build game, a build engine game, we, we had it. And he had a friend at the time, and they would, uh, you know, they'd do one-on-one -on -one matches over TCP IP. When you actually had to dial into somebody's IP and, and play, there was no, you know, server browser and 16 players, and that stuff was phenomenal. I mean, you never even heard of that. I mean, this wasn't two people sharing a screen on a platformer like, you know, uh, Donkey Kong Country. These are two people on their own computer competing with each other. I mean, Gunstar Heroes was awesome, but nothing topped a Duke match. Or, you know, even a Doom's Death match, but I don't really have memories of Doom's Death match. It's really the Duke matches that I, I really have memories of this whole phenomenon. And again, it wasn't even really me. It was my, you know, watching my dad play online with, you know, his buddy, and that's just. The craziest thing I've ever seen at the time. Uh, so, I mean, so it, it isn't even just that, you know, I was encapsulated or enthralled with the first person shooter. It was kind of like a, whoa, what was that? It was kind of like a family thing. And uh, about the time... Maybe about the time Counter-Strike Half-Life was coming out. Uh, I don't know, mid to late 90s. Uh, my dad started collecting first-person shooters. Uh, and you know, not like today where you got a digital library, but I mean, he had boxes for all these first-person shooters. What am I doing here? Why do I feel like... I've just been zoning out blasting things. Um, but like even st hey, is this what we're supposed to be doing? Um, even stuff like uh, Kiss's Psycho Circus, where they had a different box art for each of the four members of Kiss. He was trying to get all four of them. I don't remember. I think he did. I think he did get all four boxes at one time. But I mean, his aim was to collect all the first-person shooters. I had these games at my fingertips, and it. It's what I did. Well, that was a weird bug. Um, you know, it's what I did. And then, you know, Counter-Strike hits. And, uh, you know, after that we got Quake 2. And we got stuff like Action Quake coming out. We got Team Fortress. And this idea of online first-person shooting... That's all I did. That's all I can really remember for the longest time is Counter-Strike. We started in Beta 0.03, my dad, my sister, and I, and we played to version 1.3 when that was big. We were playing at 1.6 when Valve took over. We were playing, you know, Source. I still play Half-Life, I mean Counter-Strike Go, although not as often as I'd like to maybe. It's not, 
It doesn't have its hold like it used to. But... I mean... Aside from, if I had to choose one genre to play forever, stuck, you know, stuck on an island, have to play a genre, it's going to be first person shooters, even though they are all, for the most part, the same. I mean, you get your stuff like Stalker and Metro <clears throat> and, uh, <coughs> trying to think of some other uh, you know big ones that are, that really change up the formula Deus Ex so I mean it's not like they're all the same but a lot of them uh, especially pre Half-Life are maze shooters you get 10 weapons and hordes of enemies oh whoa I did not realize I was almost done uh, ten weapons, hordes of enemies, and, you know, these labyrinths to navigate. And post-Half-Life, we get the corridor shooters. We get our Call of Duties and our front lines, our battlefield campaigns, uh... And now uh, we're kind of entering a new area, a new era of the arena shooters. We have stuff like Devil Daggers and uh, the new Doom remake. And they're all the same games, really, in the end. I mean, how is this much different than Doom or Blood or Duke Nukem? Uh, you know, aside from the tiny things like bigger maps. <laughs> more weapons you navigate an area oh I guess Duke had more puzzles I don't know but the thing is is I would still enjoy every moment of it Oh, glad I got all these potions on reserve. Hey, there's no key in here. Oh, jeez. tell me that that was just a test right that wasn't the real battle and now I gotta go to the final battle room gonna make a different state this time uh, Brian 2 I kind of wish I remember where I was going with all that. 
I guess I was just explaining why I was doing all this, uh, playing all these games that kind of really don't even hold up anymore. I don't know. It's just a real big... I guess it's a big part of me, first person shooters. Even though they're violent and always in the news and, you know, the cause of all our problems these days. It's still... Me, in a sense. <laughs> okay. I guess in a sense, you know, it's not that I enjoy mindlessly shooting enemies all day and trying to navigate difficult areas you know, mastering these mazes. It maybe isn't even about the shooting at all. Maybe it's just about, you know, reconnecting with my past? Uh There were just simpler times, I guess, being a kid and, uh, Yeah. Let's uh let's finish this up then. Looking back, we have finished the Catacombs trilogy. Catacombs Adventure Trilogy. And because I completely forgot where my screenshot button is. Ain't gonna help because it ain't in here. Congratulations, you have banished the evil nemesis from the catacombs forever. Your victory and honor shall be proclaimed from world to world. That was the wrong button. Alright, so that is Catacomb Apocalypse. And uh, thank you all for dropping by today. Gonna stop a little. I mean, we're almost at two hours, so that's not bad. That's uh, it's about it's about the usual time. Uh, I'm gonna let y'all go though, and we will. I don't know if we'll meet back Monday, cause I want to finish up one or two. Well, actually, Monday's Memorial Day. I will not be on. Uh, Wednesday, I will probably not be on because I aim to have a couple of mini videos done to uh, kind of uh, finish out this early season. I'm going to have Steam Input Essentials hitting YouTube uh, this weekend, maybe Monday at the latest. I'm going to have one, maybe two mini videos coming out after that. And then the summer will be mostly streaming. I'm actually not going to be working on the YouTube channel much this summer. So, uh, all right. But next Friday, I will. I want to say I'll definitely be doing this because the next game is Wolf 3D. Unless I do RoboCop 3, I'm kind of looking into that scene. If I want, if I think it fits the criteria, I at least want to talk about it. But the next definitive game is Wolfenstein 3D or Spear of Destiny. I'm actually not sure which comes first, and I am stoked to get back to its games. Uh, and multiple weapons. Uh, Wolf 3D is the first game we're going to have with multiple weapons. I mean, Hover Tank had one, and the Catacombs games have all had one. So, I'm excited about that. I really am. I want to get to that. But, Friday's also my daughter's first day off of school for the summer. Worst case scenario, I do it at night. How do y'all feel about a, uh, you know, just changing over to nighttime instead of daytime? Maybe doing like uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. Do it for a couple hours. Maybe even every night. My summer is going to be free. Uh, at, you know, at night, 9 o'clock on. I, I might just end up streaming every night. 
uh, we'll see. So, uh, yeah. Worst case scenario, though, I'll be back Friday night with Wolfenstein or Robocop. Uh, best case scenario, I'll be back Wednesday? I don't know. We'll see. Alright, thank you all for dropping by, and I'll check you next time.